Herzlich willkommen bei der Edelstoff Media. Ich begrüße Sie aus München vom Private Banking Kongress. Und ich freue mich über Besuch aus Paris. Zu Gast ist Julien Tisserand, Portfolio Manager bei der Edmund de Rothschild und verantwortlich für den Edmund de Rothschild Bond Allocation Fund. Warm welcome, Julien. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Can you give us, a, let's say, some kind of global outlook or some kind of current, what does the current geopolitical development mean to your market? Yeah, um, so for the geopolitical tensions we're seeing, it has two repercussions and two different channels. There's, there's an inflationary pressure channel, an inflationary shock. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm thinking about uh, the China zero COVID policy uh, that is disrupting supply chains. So it's clearly inflationary and also the Russian-Ukraine conflict uh, by cutting supply to key commodities. And that's the biggest channel of transmission to the world economy in terms of inflation. And there's also, and has been more in Europe, and a confidence shock to companies and consumers uh, as a result of that. But what we think is the inflationary shock is a bit more long la lasting. Okay. And that's what is impacting the bond market as a bond investor the most. Uh, and we've seen inflation expectations in the bond market rise as a result and bond yields rise as well in tandem uh, in the US, in Europe uh, as well. For German, especially for German investors, yeah. uh, high inflation is a super monster. Yeah. They fear inflation because they are not, everyone is linked to the equity market nor the bond market. They, they fear it. Yeah. Do you expect a double digit uh, inflation rate? So we, we can't rule it out completely. We have to be humble and, and there's, this, there's a lot of uncertainty. We haven't had, I would say, a normal economy, a normal economic cycle since the COVID period. There's been on and off COVID lockdown and supply disruption around the world uh, with reopening. And so we have to be humble. We, we can't exclude it, but it's not our base case. The base case is that inflation is actually in the process of peaking in Europe, in the US as well. Uh, we've seen a high number, close to 8% in, in the Eurozone. We should see this, this as a high plateau. So the next three, four months, should, we should still see high inflation, but closer to 7%. And then slowly coming back down in terms of year-over-year -year numbers because of base effects from last year. And this is with a view that commodity prices, especially electricity prices in Europe, linked to gas mm -hmm. and also oil, stay relatively where they are. So uh, Brent oil around 100, 105 dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, if that changes for any reason, then we'll have to review and revise this outlook. And what do you expect the central banks to do? So, and that's where we, we agree with the view that um, the ECB is feels, or the, some German people or German politicians, and we've seen across Europe as well, feeling central banks are behind the curve, and it's been the same in the US. So central banks are rushing into uh, getting their risk management hat on to, to combat inflation. We think they are right, uh, and they're also right in the way that the Fed has to tighten and has to be quicker than the, B, the ECB, because inflation in the US is, is a lot more anchored. Mm -hmm. uh, core inflation is 6.5%. In Europe, core inflation is 29 So it's above central bank mandates in both regions. But the inflation we see in Europe, it's a lot about energy. 70% is energy related. And this is the central something the central bank can't really fight because of disruption. Mm -hmm. And as a result, shouldn't overreact to it. Whereas in the US, a lot of inflation is wage related because of the pressure with the labor market. And as a result, the Fed is right that it should react more there. Can, so, we, yeah. can we briefly talk about your investment strategy? Uh, it's a very special strategy. What does it, in, in which way does it differ from your competitors? So the fund I co-manage, so EDR Bond Allocation, in its name is a bond allocation fund. And it has a few levers uh, that it can use. So we use a modified duration between minus two and plus eight. So we're very flexible on duration. And to give you uh, a range of possibilities and ideas, the last two years, we visited 7.75, so the high range in March 2020, and we were slightly negative duration in December, last December. So we use this full scale of duration to generate performance and protect the fund when rates are rising. Mm -hmm. 
And in terms of allocation to sectors, we are also very, very flexible. So that's a key strength of the fund compared to competitors is we can move the allocation very rapidly. We are in liquid strategies, uh, so no liquid bond holdings. And it means we can move very quickly, use derivatives and also cash bonds. And another example is in March 2020, the fund was owning about 70% of credit CDS protection, which has helped absorb the drawdown of the, the COVID you know, market drawdown. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say it's a key strength. So it's not a long only fund, it's a flexible fund that can adapt. And uh, coming from an institutional background, we have views uh, with my colleagues, so I can manage the fund, but we are very aware of when we need to change. We're not bond bull forever or bond bear forever. We adapt to the situation. Uh, historically, owning bonds and owning duration of fund was a good protection against credit risk. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we've changed that mindset. Duration is now not a credit protection anymore or hasn't been. And reducing your credit risk in your fund and owning more CDS protection has been a better call lately uh, than, than owning duration. Using this flexibility in your portfolio, yeah. what is the or what comes on the table right now for the next month? Yeah, so as I mentioned, so duration was no longer protecting us because of the rising inflation pressure. Um, we think now, to some extent, US yields, where they are, you know, touching three to 75, 3%, mm -hmm. they are pricing a Fed that is already relatively restrictive. So we feel duration is again, can be used as a tool to protect against downside in growth. Um, okay. So we've added back some duration. So we had uh, close to uh, very low duration. Now we are closer to 2.8 years of duration uh, currently in the fund, uh, essentially in the US, Australia, Canada. So high beta countries that have yields that moved up and can absorb uh, a, sh a growth shock and yields can go down. Uh, in terms of credit asset classes, where we prefer to be invested is on shorter duration asset classes in Europe. So short dated US, uh, European high yield and short dated European IG are some of the preferred calls. And we also like emerging market short dated sovereigns in hard currency. And what kind of uh, return should investors expect within the next three to five years? So that's where we think the bond market is again interesting because mm -hmm. with yields rising, the forward expectation for return mm -hmm. has been rising. So investors have taken drawdown this year, but we think that forward returns are much better for fixed income, especially some of the credit asset classes I mentioned. So you have a euro high yield short dated uh, one to three years is around 300 bips of spread. Mm -hmm. That's 3.5 to 4% yield. That's not a bad yield for a scenario where I should have mentioned, we don't expect a recession. So we expect growth to moderate, but the engine of growth are strong enough to sustain no recession this year. Uh, so we don't expect default rates in, in high yield to jump. So that's an example. Um, same for EM, a sovereign high yield uh, debt in hard currency, so dollar or euros. This is in dollar uh, yield of 6.77%. So that's also something that is attractive and becoming more attractive than it was six to eight months ago. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Julien. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Thank Ladies you. And gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Meine Damen und Herren, vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Wir wünschen Ihnen eine entspannte Zeit.